Welcome to my daily devotions for, you're not going to believe this, Saturday, October 1st, 2022. Where does time go? Today, we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Acts chapter 1, going to begin our journey through the book of Acts, Psalm 134, a very short psalm, and the 8th chapter of Job. Let's pray first. Father, speak to us through your word today. Uh, address our lives. Crawl inside us with your truth and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us new. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints. Saints being the holy ones made holy by the blood of Jesus means Christians. Okay? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? They will. Check out the book of Revelation, okay? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that if we judge that, that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint judges, even men of little account, in the church. In other words, the church is supposed to take care of that stuff, not the government. It gets out of whack sometimes, but that happens. So that's what's supposed to happen. Church is supposed to take care of disputes, legal disputes between people, okay? Verse 5, I say this to shame you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute between believers? But instead, one brother goes to law against another, and this in front of unbelievers. In other words, we blow our witness when we do that. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have been completely defeated already. Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourselves cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunken, nor the drunken, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Listen to what he says. Slanderers and swindlers, along with all the other stuff. We tend to focus on sexual immorality there, but there's all this other stuff, and there's a lot of that sin floating around all over the place. And that is what some of you were, okay? But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. In other words, we're all sinners, and we used to do some of those things. But now we're supposed to be different, okay? Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. Got to get a new body, you know? The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that, that your bodies are members of Christ himself? In other words, we're one with Christ, our bodies. Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never, never, okay? Do, not, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? It's what's supposed to happen in marriage, but nowhere else, okay? For it is said that two will become one flesh. That's the point. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Our body is where the Holy Spirit lives. We're the temple. We are the sanctuary. And we ought to honor God in, with our body in every way. Sexual immorality does everything except honor God. That's a powerful passage of Scripture. Very, very direct. He was good at that. Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. This is the second volume of what we call Luke Acts. Uh, the the, the uh, physician, he was a medical doctor named Luke, traveled around with the Apostle Paul. We'll see him later in the book of Acts pop up. But he wrote 
the uh, kind of a more scholarly writing. He wrote the uh, the book of Luke, and then the second volume is the book of Acts. The first volume is what Jesus did when he was here. The second volume is what he did through his body, the church. That's the book of Acts. It's very important. Okay, I'm going to start over. One, one. In, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. That's a big deal. The kingdom of God in the Bible is a big deal. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is about to come into the church. It happens in the second chapter of Acts. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They're talking, they're thinking politics, okay? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father is set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's what we're supposed to do today. We're supposed to be his witnesses all over the place. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, but suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. And they returned to Jerusalem from the hill country, from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, the son of James. There were two Judases. One was Iscariot who betrayed him. The other was the son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. They had them a prayer meeting, okay? In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called the field in their, the field in their language, Akeldama, that is field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, then uh, let, let there be no one to dwell in it. May another take his place of leadership. So they got to replace uh, Judas as, a, as an apostle. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us for the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time that Jesus was taken up from us, for one of these must must uh, become a witness with us of his resurrection. This is a big deal, the resurrection, always. So they proposed two men, Joseph Carl Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. When they prayed, uh, then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two uh, you have chosen, which, which of these two you've chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the, fell, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Book of Acts. Very off to a running start. Very, very powerful. And then Psalm 13, Psalm 134, excuse me, Psalm 134. Praise the Lord, all you his servants of the Lord, who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Just a quick uh, prayer of blessing. We need to, sh I, I, I call these bullet prayers. You and I need to shoot off bullet prayers as we go through the day. There's Psalm 134. It's really a bullet prayer. Quickly. And then we're going to look at Job chapter 8 as we have Job and his buddies, they're trying to talk him into 
con convincing him that he would, he sinned somehow. You know, that's why everything was going south. Not not true at all. It's not always true. Not every, seldom is it true. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, another one of his buddies, how long will you say such things? Your words are a blustering wind. He's talking to Job. Does God pervert justice? Does the Almighty pervert what is right? When your children sinned against him, he gave them over to the penalty of their sin. In other words, he killed his kids because they were sinners. But if you will look to God and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, and now he will rouse himself on your behalf. You know, since you're a sinner too, maybe he'll you look to him, he'll help you and restore you to your rightful place. Your big beginnings will seem humble. So prosperous will you will your future be. Ask the former generation and find out what their fathers learned. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not instruct you and tell you? Will they not bring your bring forth words from their understanding? Can papyrus grow tall where there is no marsh? Can greeds thrive without water? While, while still growing and uncut, will need will uh, wither more quickly than grass. Such is the destiny of all who forget God, so perish the hope of the godless. He's trying to say, man, you forgot God, you know, but he didn't. Sometimes we suffer anyway. That was what was going on with Job. What he trusts in is his, is fragile, and he relies on and what he relies on is a spider's web. He leans on his web, but it gives way. He clings to it, but it does not hold. He is like a well-watered plant in the sunshine, spreading its shoots over the garden. It entwines its roots around a pile of rocks and looks for a place among the stones. But when it is torn from its spot, that place disowns, disowns it and says, I never saw you. Surely its life withers away, and from the soil other plants grow. Surely God does not reject a blameless man or strengthen the hands of the evildoers. He's saying, you know, if you were if you weren't evil, God wouldn't reject you, and that's just not true. God, so we just goes. Everybody goes through hard times. Job was going through that. He got restored. Okay, he will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Your enemies will be clothed in shame, and the tents of the wicked will be no more. He's just telling him, if you'll just repent, everything will be okay. Never quite that simple. It's just never quite that simple. I hope God has spoken to you today. And that you'll have a good day. Let's pray again. Father, thanks for speaking to us. I pray that you would make us different because you've spoken. Bless everyone who hears this and give them a great day. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll talk to you soon.